Thank you guys all for coming out today. It's actually a really exciting day here at Huntington University, and I, we can't wait to tell you all about it. My name is Lynette Fager. I'm Director of Communication here. And it's my privilege, actually, to, on, uh, to introduce a couple of folks up here, and then I'm going to pass it off to them for some statements. And then you can ask a bunch of questions, because this is a, it's a really exciting story that we've been kind of itching to share for a while. So we have Dr. Lance Clark over here. He's I don't know if he likes it when I call him this, but I'm going to call him it anyway. He's one of the founding fathers of our, <laughs> of our award winning film program here at Huntington University. Then next to him is Matt Webb, uh, who is a graduate of Huntington University, class of 98. Yeah. Yes, I got, got that right. And he is actually the writer and director of Wayfaring Stranger. And then over here, we have Cassie Balschmidt. She is a 2015 graduate of Huntington University who is coming back as a mentor, who's now been in the profession for a couple of years and now is back as a mentor for this particular film. And hopefully we get to keep her coming back for more films in the future. And then we have Phil Wilson, who actually comes to us all the way from Arizona, our HU Arizona location. He is the director of programming out there, and it's, it's been great to have him here and to be able to connect our two locations. So I'm actually going to pass it off to Dr. Lance Clark to tell you a little bit more about, about Wayfaring Stranger, and then we'll do some questions. Thank you, Lynette. Thanks for coming today, everybody. Appreciate seeing so many um, familiar faces to us. I want to uh, thank Andy Zay for being here today, your state senator. I'll throw you a few kudos as well. And we have other um, members of our film board here today. I want to thank you guys for coming and our HU uh, staff. We have several members of our staff here today because what we're doing in making feature films is a very collaborative effort. And it is taking the entire village and community of Huntington University to, to pull this off. Um, my name is Dr. Lance Clark. I'm the Dean of the Arts at Huntington University, and I'm into, heading into my 30th year here at Huntington University, so I guess I am kind of the grandfather now of uh, the program, which is scary to me to think of that. Um, and I'm blessed to have uh, the chance today to share with you a little bit about what we're doing. In 1998, we sent our first student, our first film study student, to Los Angeles, California to study for a semester and to intern as a senior in Los Angeles. And since that time, we've sent hundreds of students to Los Angeles through our LAFSC program. And in 2016, 2015, 2016, we started our Arizona Center, and Phil Wilson was a big part of that. And we have sent some students to our LAFSC program out there. Skip forward to 2019, spring of 2019. It's actually spring break of 2019. Do you remember what happened at spring break? And those in the educational world, yeah, COVID hit spring break 2019. And we had 10 students out there studying in California that were sent home because of COVID. And Matt and I and Phil, we all had to put our heads together and some senior leaders at the university to go, what are we gonna do? How do we address this? Because it was baked into our curriculum to send students out to learn more about the film industry. Even though we have an incredible film program at both of our centers, we were sending students out for this immersive experience during their senior year. And what we ended up doing was creating a new program called the Film Capstone Program, where our seniors take an entire semester and work on a feature-length film or TV project. And then we invite our industry professionals, like Cassie and Phil and about 12 other professionals that come in from all over the country and help then mentor our students in an immersive, month-long filmmaking experience feature film, feature television experience right here in Northeast Indiana. And um, the town has been fantastic. Huntington County has been fantastic. I wanted to thank um, Mayor Richard Strick. He is going to be joining us in a little bit. But the town opened up their arms to us to say, come and film here. Uh, like I said, Andy Zay played a big role in helping us um, develop some relationships with local areas um, and benefactors. And also at the state level, there's now going to be a 30% discount uh, for those coming to Indiana to make feature films and entertainment and music. And that's a new thing that just kicks in this summer. And if you want to ask Andy more about that, you can afterwards. But that's a huge deal, you guys, a huge deal for us. And the fact that now this is in our program, it's baked into our curriculum. Every year, a new project will emerge through our program here at Huntington University. Like um, Lynette said, we're one of the most awarded winning film programs and TV and animation programs in the nation. And we're just excited about it. Um, as you can tell, I get a little excited about it. And right now, we are about three weeks into our first feature film called The Wayfaring Stranger, written and directed by this wonderful man over here, uh, Professor Matt Webb. 
and it is featuring two uh, professional actors at a high, high Screen Actors Guild level. Um, Stephen Baldwin, if you see the poster over here, Stephen Baldwin is uh, one of our actors on the film and was here last week and also Bethany Lind comes to us. Um, she's been on uh, several TV shows, The Ozarks, just to name one and others. And, um, and then we have casted a whole host of other amazing actors, both children and adults, to be a part of this uh, first feature film project. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Matt Webb right now to talk a little bit about the story and his role on it. And then we can just open it up to you guys to come share a few things as well. So Matt. Thank you. So uh, Wayfaring Stranger is actually a true story. It's based on a true story that happened to uh, Dr. Clark and his family back in the early 1970s. Um, the United Brethren denomination had commissioned his father, Doyle, to uh, unite four small rural churches in southern Michigan and try to build a new church for all of them to, to be under. And uh, the day before uh, construction was supposed to begin, their contractor had a heart attack and was not able to continue on. Doyle uh, got on his knees and prayed for a miracle. And uh, into the drive, uh, into the bean field <laughs> where they were prepping to build this church, drove uh, Glenn Frank, a uh, washed up uh, country music singer with a, an addiction to alcohol. And, um, and he offered his services for free. He said, I'm a licensed carpenter. I'm on unemployment. The government pays my check every Friday, and I can work for free if you need the help. And this began um, uh, a months long engagement between uh, Glenn Frank, the Clark family, uh, and the community of New Hope United Brethren Church. We've taken that story and, uh, and told it through the lens of the, the Clark children. Uh, and, uh, and, and recreated some of, the, uh, some of the story so that we could uh, view this through their lens. Uh, so in our film, uh, young Lance and Troy are pastor's kids, um, and Lance especially trying to find his identity as a pastor's kid who has a drive for art, not unlike, uh, <laughs> not unlike the real Lance. Um, and so when Glenn comes into their lives, not only is he there to, uh, to be uh, sort of a, a rescuer for the project for Doyle, but also um, an opportunity for Lance, the young Lance, to be able to learn how to play guitar and engage music and try to ask some questions that many Christians um, do ask, and myself included, uh, how do I engage this artistic calling within my life and my faith? Um, how do I integrate and merge these two things that in some culture, in some aspects of American culture seem like they may not uh, be able to uh, coexist. And so these are some of the questions that we ask in the film. And we just had a wonderful opportunity to work with some incredible actors. Jeff Dernlin plays um, Glenn Frank every night. Uh, we get teary watching his uh, performance uh, as he brings Glenn to life on screen. Um, we have some incredible young actors playing Lance and Troy. Uh, Reed Schwederman plays uh, Lance. Uh, Gabriel Solis plays Troy. And then we have uh, actors, um, David Bianco, who's playing Doyle. We've got um, Alicia Kelly, uh, who's playing uh, Janet. And, and then a whole host of, uh, of actors from around the country who are uh, coming to play other members of the church community and, and the local community. So it's just been a, a treat and a pleasure to try to bring this real life transformative story to the screen. Um, it was an experience that changed the Clarks dramatically uh, as they were transformed by Glenn's ex uh, presence in their lives. And it transformed Glenn's life uh, dramatically. Um, he had a a drunken conversion experience um, uh, that uh, completely upended uh, his life as he knew it. And the Clarks got to play a major role in that experience. Um, so without giving too much more of the story away, I'll just say that uh, um, everybody was changed. And I, I think as I look at my colleagues uh, on set every day and the students who are learning from them, our experience has been not dissimilar <laughs> to the Clarks in that community. Uh, raising the funds, trying to see all the funding come in, some feeling like at the 11th or maybe even 12th or 13th hour. Um, the, uh, the community 
coming around to support this endeavor, um, people who believe in the project, uh, stepping up and being, uh, being those change agents in our lives just as uh, the frontier community uh, in Michigan saw that those people step into. So, uh, and sometimes, you know, uh, life imitates art. Uh, and in this case, art imitates life and the life, it's kind of a weird mix, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, it's just been a wonderful experience for us. Uh, challenging and good in so many, many ways. Thanks, Matt. I'd like uh, Cassie um, Balschmidt to come up and just share a little bit about her role as a professional mentor, because that's really a major component of this film capstone, is to bring professional mentors in to mentor our students on the process of uh, filmmaking. Cassie, would you come up and share your experience? I'm a little shorter than these guys. Um, yeah, so I'm Cassie Balschmidt. I uh, graduated here in 2015, and then I've kind of had a range of experiences where I graduated and I immediately had a job at a church that I worked for um, for a little over a year. And then I went into working into um, a, at a production house, which focused a lot on both live action work and animated work and they did a little bit of VR and post-production and VFX and um, then after that I went into full-time freelancing as an assistant director and um, particularly with my goal with my uh, job uh, there's a lot of uh, people are often confused by it. they're like oh you're the assistant to the director and I'm like no 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 <laughs> that's not that's, that's not it um, a, a lot of what I do is um, is is giving the director, and in this case Matt, the freedom to be able to work with the actors and to focus on getting the absolute best performance that he possibly can, and then you know, surround ourselves with people who are the you know highly knowledgeable and experienced in their fields to take care of the other pieces. And so you know, we have um, an amazing gaffer in T.J. Clooney and. We have a wonderful camera team, um, including Phil Wilson, and um, you know we've we've found people who are um, highly experienced in their field to take on those roles and um, to support Matt in in his endeavor. And the way that my role jumps into that is you know taking care of logistics and uh, scheduling and onset management, and so I let. Uh, Matt play in the sandbox while I'm the box, is what I often say. <laughs> um, everybody wants the opportunity to play in the sandbox, right? But if the sand is just piled up in the middle of the playground, it's all gonna blow away. And it's my job to create the structure um, and the, the wood around to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to, to, to play and make this really phenomenal film. Um, that, you know, we're really excited to be a part of. And, you know, an amazing part of bringing in these experienced mentors is the opportunity that we have to speak into these students. You know, we, we get to, they, they come to school and they get the academic side, right? Um, and at a liberal arts school like Huntington, um, you know, you get the opportunity to learn about things um, outside of your chosen field. Um, you get the opportunity to learn and, you know, broaden your horizons in a lot of ways. Um, and then we come in and we give them a little bit of a dose of what the real world's about to look like. Um, in a, and in this case, what I really like about it is it's a safe environment. Um, like, I tell the students, like, every day we're gonna make mistakes. Like, it's absolutely inevitable. We are never gonna have a perfect day. Um, but it's our job to take those experiences and learn from them and grow from them and become better storytellers and filmmakers and you know in the technical side of things like learn new pieces of the gear and um, become better communicators and um, overall like create a wonderful environment hopefully to work into um, because let's be real the real world is hard um, and so it's our job to help prepare them for that in a um, hopefully safe place we have you know very intense open conversations about like what the expectations are. How do you manage the relationships with people on set? Because a lot of our jobs is not just this creative thing, it's managing relationships and um, 
you know, communication and talking to each other. And, um, you know, the way most of us get our jobs is, is not necessarily by our resume, but by the people who recommend us for the next gig. And so, you know, this is an opportunity for them to build those relationships within each other and then with these mentors, because um, realistically, we can become the person who helps them get their next job. Um, that's the way I, I did it. <laughs> um, I, I met somebody who was willing to invest in me and, um, and then I moved on to another mentor who again was willing to invest in me and gave me the opportunities and the safe place to learn. And you know, I was able to in the industry surround myself with people who were willing to help me grow into, um, into the, the person that I can become and who saw that potential. And that's a really special thing that hopefully we can bring to these students as a part of this project, um, allowing them to, you know, spread their spread their wings a little bit for perhaps the the first time, and uh, that's a really cool opportunity to see them um, like take on all these new tasks and these new things where they're like, oh, I didn't realize, oh, I didn't know, and um, now get to especially now that we're in week three, like really some of these pieces have really um, become ingrained in them and they've uh, begun to start utilizing them and it's a great way to help them prepare for what the industry is gonna look like. Um, because there are pieces of this that aren't gonna change based off of where you are, whether it's here in Huntington, Indiana, LA, New York, or for me, Chicago, like there, there's a lot of opportunity for people to learn and, and grow and um, you know, hopefully find a job and <laughs> be able to provide for themselves and, um, you know, eventually potentially their families. And so um, it's, it's an honor to be able to invest in the students in that way um, and to give back and to, um, you know, help them be prepared for their next step after this. So, thank you. And with that music cue, we'll move on to the next year. <laughs> thank you for that. Um, how exciting, right? I mean, did you ever think you'd hear somebody say feature filmmaking in Indiana, right? I mean, that's happening. It's happening now. We're halfway through our first feature film in Huntington County in Northeast Indiana. And um, I saw uh, Mayor Richard Strick just walked in and you should have been on set yesterday. We were downtown. We actually closed a street off. We got to do that. And the city was fantastic in that. And we, the local businesses were so giving and caring in that moment. We had prop cars on the street. And, uh, you know, Indiana's not used to this. We're not used to making feature films. And this is transformational. This is going to be something that we're not just doing this month. We're doing it a year from now, and then the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. So we're really bringing and infusing an entertainment shift to this, the Hoosier state. Um, and we had some actors in last week that were out of town and they were blown away by Indiana. I'm not sure they had been to Indiana before, right? But when you bring 50 plus cast and crew to a state, that infuses the state with some resources, right? We're renting hotels, we're buying food, we're buying props, we're buying all kinds of stuff for our feature film. It's pretty exciting. We have 150 students right now studying digital media arts, film, animation, TV production, graphic design, right here in Huntington, Indiana. We also have another 150 students in Peoria, Arizona. And our director of that program is Phil Wilson. Professor Wilson, would you come up and just share a little bit about your experience and what's happening here between our two centers and, and what your experience has been so far? Yeah, um, hi, I'm Phil Wilson. I'm the program director at Huntington University, Arizona. Um, I think every faculty member is thinking about how can I make this relevant for the student and how can I get what I'm trying to get across practical for the student. There's a lot of theory, there's a lot of talking about building a house or, or playing baseball. We don't talk about playing baseball, though we actually play baseball. We don't talk about building a house, we build a house and the house that we are building with these guys is and, and these ladies is, is beautiful and touching and meaningful. And I try my best to get the students to see their art and their craft as an opportunity to be of service. And with this story, um, this is a, a demonstration for them to be able to see that come to fruition and it's powerful. I myself uh, am a generalist but feel blessed and fortunate to be able to be put in a position 
to grow in my craft area and be a little bit in over my head. I think everybody on this project is in, in a li little bit over our heads. But the prerequisite for being used by God is self-doubt. And we are all being used by God through this experience and what we're being able to give our students. So Arizona is growing and flourishing and feeling blessed to be a part of this project and enter into the structure that has been built and facilitated here. And we look forward to continuing future collaborations. So my position is on camera team. Um, I get to work with uh, JJ Bukowski, who's a professional cinematographer. He's amazing. He has high standards. He's calling the students to um, professional level quality, responsibility, meeting call times, 6 a.m. call times. It's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. And the conversations that are happening at the end of the day, the huddle up, you can't get that anywhere else. That is not classroom. That is on set. When the set becomes the classroom and we are all doing a SWOT analysis and we are all figuring out like what worked, what didn't, what can we do better and come back the next day and put that into practice. It's invaluable. Um, so I get to be a, be a compliment. I'm, I'm running B camera. We've, we've given uh, the, the coverage and the, the beautiful frames to uh, JJ and TJ, who is an amazing gaffer. Um, every, the heart of every single mentor on this project too is just to not settle. This is a Christian film. This is a university film, but nobody is settling on this. They are pushing for their absolute best and professionalism and the movie that is going to come out of this is going to look like Netflix or Hulu or of that caliber, of that caliber. It's an independent Christian film. But every, with everything we're putting into this, it's, it's not going to come across as low budget as it actually is. <laughs> so, cool. Yeah. So that's me. Questions? So the question is, would we, did I think we'd be doing this 10 years ago? No, I didn't think we would be doing this 10 years ago. I wasn't sure we could ever reach a feature length level because we were sending students to Los Angeles every year. And there just wasn't the resources to pull that off. And now with the focus here at Huntington, back at Huntington, we're able to, we find the resources to do that. Uh, and like I said earlier, it took, it's taken the entire campus community to pull this off, all different levels from the business department through uh, administration, and so we're pretty thankful for that. And now, I don't know how we turn back from it. Like, we, we're in it, we're going forward with it, we're having a great experience, we're tired, but we're, we're, we're loving every second of it. Yeah, how, how long has it taken from initial conception uh, to this point? Well, uh, the initial, that was a great question. How long did it take to get to this point where we're finally shooting features film? It's been a three year process to get to this point. I mean, all the way through COVID, right? I mean, beginning in the, in the spring of 2019, uh, we knew we had to shift it up. And so now this is, you know, two and a half, three years later, we're, we're at that point now where uh, this has been the solution for us to move forward. And um, it's just been fantastic, a ton of work. To my knowledge, we're the only university or college in the state of Indiana, maybe the Midwest, maybe the states, that, are, that has created a program where we're doing feature length, Netflix level looks for a feature project uh, that's at the undergraduate level. Okay, at this point, we'll just kind of break off. If you guys have more questions, um, we'll just kind of hang around. Feel the freedom to come find any of us, and, uh, and you can, you're also welcome to catch uh, uh, Senator Andy Zay here with us. Uh, our Mayor Richard Strick is also here, um, and it, we have some film uh, folks as well, and some vice presidents here uh, for the university. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Eileen Velasco from the Press. Hi. Hi. Uh, new managing editor there. Uh, where, what locations in town yeah. might people see you at? Yeah, I mean, we've been all over the county. Um, we've been out uh, on some county roads, 1000 North. We've been, we were just down on Market Street and, and Franklin uh, yesterday. 
where uh, we've been up and down uh, some local streets in the area for the, just to create a look of like, we're in a small town, you know, USA kind of thing. So it's been all over the, all over the county, really. Can you think of anything more specific? I mean, Heim Street, the yeah. loop around here, the campus. Uh, you yeah. want to speak to anything more on that? Well, we've just been really honored to have uh, some local uh, areas welcome us. Uh, Market Street Bar and Grill allowed us to film there yesterday. Um, the LaFontaine Center allowed us to film there last week. Uh, there's been uh, a number of uh, churches and personal families that have allowed us to film either uh, in, their, in their buildings or on their premises. So it's been, uh, we, we've really felt welcomed by, by the community. And, and we're excited as we, as we start to build these relationships, not just where we're filming with locations, but also with, with the city uh, and with the state. Um, we're, we're excited to see about partnerships as we continue to make movies going forward. Uh, and I, I worked in Los Angeles for about 12 years, and one of the things that I learned was uh, when you bring, bring in a big production, um, it's really exciting the first time and then it's less exciting the second time and like the third or the fourth time people are kind of tired of all the to do um, and so what we would want to do is is our best to try to build really good relationships maintain those relations relationships really honor and respect the people that we're working with and among um, and hopefully be able to collaborate in ways that are really positive not just for the productions we're trying to make but for all involved so that's our hope how did you get Stephen Baldwin to be a part of the project and Bethany Lind, a uh, name that uh, folks might not recognize, but maybe a face that they recognize? How did that process, how did you get Stephen Baldwin to come here on a set in Huntington? Do you want to do that? I wasn't okay, super I, involved I, in I'll, it. I'll speak to it. <laughs> yeah, um, we, uh, Matt and I went down to a pitchathon in Nashville in February, and it was, uh, it's like speed dating with film distributors. And we, Matt and I had two hours to, to speed date as many um, you know, distrib distribution companies as we could. You know, a film is like a product. You want to take your product to the marketplace. And we heard uh, through that, that four hours that we were there, like, well, who's on your project? Who's on your project? They, it was clear we, they wanted names, you know? So we came back, we, we drew a list of names, we looked at um, Faith Aligned films and who had been in some Faith Aligned films. Um, some names came out of the Hallmark Channel, some names came out of you know, various, it's all about the relationship and the connections, and Stephen Baldwin's name came up, and our casting director, Ryan Long, reached out to his agent and a few others, and he was available during the four or five days that we had last week, and that's how that came about. Same, Bethany Lind uh, came on, uh, literally, we cast her on a Friday, she was acting Tuesday. Um, we had another uh, actress that uh, some, some family matters came up and she wasn't able to fulfill her obligation to be on set. And again, we put out a call and it's, it's all about that relationship. I mean, this is a small knit community I'm realizing uh, of actors and actresses and, um, and Bethany Lynn came in and she's, she was just fantastic to work with as well. And Stephen Baldwin brought a lot of energy to, to the set and to the, the crew as well. Can you yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know what? We, what I, I could say to uh, you know the public, they're reading the, the article, how they could uh, you know maybe gently approach. They want you know you got you're gonna have the gapers. I mean you know. Yeah. How how you know? You yeah. Know. Um, best way to to see what we're doing is to be an extra on the film, um, <laughs> and you can just uh, email Ryan Ryan at. Uh, ForesterFilm.com, Ryan, R-Y-A-N, at ForesterFilm.com. Yep. And we need, we need 40 extras uh, Monday on set. ForesterFilm.com. That's honestly the best way. Otherwise, the sets are pretty closed. Um, you know, last night we were on Market Street and we, we had a lot of people kind of watching from the edges. But yeah. if you're an extra, you're in it. You're seeing it. You're able to observe what's going on. And, mm -hmm. and that's really the best way to, to be a part of it. Okay. Not that they want to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, it's just fun to see. I mean, people on the edges watching, it's, it's, it's really fun to see. But, boy, being an extra, you're sitting right in the middle of it and get to experience all the different departments. Because yeah. there's like eight or nine different departments, and all our students are being mentored under these departments. And you see this machine start to work. It's like, it's like conducting an orchestra, and Matt's the conductor, and um, Cassie's the first you know, violinist over here. You know? <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. How many students? Uh, 
I think we have, I don't know the exact number to be honest, uh, but I know that it's over 30. Um, so we have uh, a huge number of our, of our students that are involved. And one thing that's really lovely is that it's not only our film students. Uh, we have a number of students from, uh, from different departments that are closely aligned, especially um, the theater program, uh, who are working to help us in all kinds of aspects of, of things, uh, especially in wardrobe, hair, and makeup. And uh, because a lot of those disciplines uh, overlap quite a bit. And one thing we found is that, so we originally, we originally designed it so that our seniors uh, would be the ones who uh, were really the driving student force. Um, and we had 20 fantastic seniors who came on board and, uh, and are really in these, uh, not just supporting roles underneath the mentors, but really leadership roles, many of them. And it's incredible to watch them learn and grow and thrive and, and, and stumble and fall and we try to pick them back up and it's hard. I mean, it is hard work. Um, but one of the joys that I've found is that we really have wonderful space to bring on more and more people. I was talking to a couple of, uh, of my uh, colleagues here at the university just this morning and saying, I'm excited that we're able to bring in not just the seniors, but we're also bringing in juniors and sophomores and freshmen. And really, I, I foresee that in, films, in film projects to come, the seniors will maintain these leadership roles, but really students from across the board in the film program and, and theater and, and animation and others uh, will be able to be involved and really, really have a, an exciting role. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of independent films and particularly those with a Christian component or mm -hmm. a Christian association mm -hmm. go straight to DVD, mm -hmm. streaming, and yeah. or being screened in churches. Yeah. Do you guys have a strategy or, I mean, do you have the ambition to, hey, we want to release this in major theaters and do you have a strategy to achieve that? I realize we're looking ahead. No, well, you have to look ahead actually in order to get the financing on the front end. So it's a great question. Um, do we have what kind of strategy do we have to get this film out to audiences? Really, as as the first time uh, independent film production company that we are, we have to start with a lot of ideas, and as we go, see what doors open and see what doors close as we go forward. Um, as we've done our research, we found that theatrical is actually one of the hardest ways to make money at all. You end up often losing money by going theatrical, um, especially at the level that, uh, that we're working at. Um, but that theatrical can be combined with other streaming things to actually make for profitable opportunities. So we're looking at, um, we're looking at streaming services for sure. Uh, we're looking and talking with uh, different uh, organizations that might help us get limited theatrical release to get some buzz that allows us then to get more opportunity for streaming service um, opportunities. Um, there is the, the VOD, the video on demand. Um, there's less and less of the DVD, Blu-ray kind, of kind of a thing these days. Uh, but really we've got, we've got our, we're looking and talking with, oh man, half a dozen different, uh, different organizations with different kinds of strategies to try to get this out to the community. Um, so we're excited to kind of see what opportunities will emerge uh, and new doors keep opening, you know, on a weekly and monthly basis. So we'll know more as we get closer to a finished product and have something to sell. One of the things we learned in this sort of speed dating uh, experience that we had down in, uh, in Nashville with distributors was that um, they were excited about our film idea and they, they loved it. And they weren't willing to talk any more about distribu distribution until we had a finished film. So once we have a finished film, as a first, as first time uh, production company, we can then, once it's finished now, we bring it to them and distribution doors uh, are far more likely to open for us. So but you keep mentioning uh, Netflix. Uh, <clears throat> films. Mm -hmm. Is that one of your goals? I, it's certainly an option. Something like Netflix or Amazon or Hulu, one of the major streaming services, we would love to have that. That honestly, the most eyes we can get on the project, that's our that's our goal as far as distribution. We want as many people as humanly possible to be impacted by this film. The story was transformative in the lives of the Clarks, in the lives of Glenn Frank, in the lives of the frontier community. Uh, and we believe it can be transformative in the lives of the audience that sees it too. That's our, that's our hope and our goal.
Yes. Um, so what is the timeline for it to be finished? And then also just to brainstorm with like streaming options, is there still a Huntington Drive-In? Uh, yeah, there is still a Huntington Drive-In, so thank you for asking that, and that would be a fantastic and fun way to be able to share uh, this, especially with the local community. We would love to have local screenings. Um, because this is connected to the United Brethren denomination, we would love to have uh, screenings all across America for United Brethren churches, too. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, repeat the first part of the question. The timeline, yes, I'm sorry. Um, uh, as far as the timeline goes, uh, we're hoping to have the finished edit, uh, the picture edit of the film done by September 1st. Uh, and then throughout the fall, we'll, we would like to do the um, official, the final color correction on it, the final sound mix, and also scoring the film for music. Uh, if at all possible, we would love to have a finished film by around Christmas or early New Year. Yeah. Yeah. Other, yeah. Oh, we certainly hope so. In fact, we're already talking with filmmakers that are regional uh, who are interested in partnering with the university to make their films. They've got ideas, they've got financing, and they're interested in partnering with us. And we're very excited about those, those possibilities. Um, it, gives our, it gives our students uh, and our alumni, uh, our, our faculty community, a chance to, uh, to build and grow the relationships. And so we're very, we're very open to that possibility. Yeah, thank you. Back there. I know you mentioned the community a few times. Can you just explain like, you know, how big this is for the city? For the Huntington community, the Huntington City community or the regional community? Um, I think that I think that it's really exciting for a lot of people to be able to see a feature film coming to Huntington, Indiana. Uh, I don't know that there's been a feature film uh, shot in Huntington, uh, at least not in recent memory. So it's exciting for us to be able to do that. To bring in names that are recognizable uh, that you've seen in movies and TV is super exciting. Um, for me, what I'm really excited about is building partnerships with the local community. Um, we've already been building re relationships with our alumni community and with our faculty community in Arizona and the students there. And we would love to just continue to grow a community that's excited about making movies together and, and, and honor them. So um, we, we are already working with uh, local restaurants, um, catering services, uh, food trucks, hotels, um, bed and breakfast, I mean all kinds of, uh, of local businesses and we would love to continue to build that. Um, we received uh, a generous grant from the Huntington County Community Foundation to help make that possible uh, this year and we're excited about uh, doing more of those kinds of partnerships with local businesses and foundations. Um, it's exciting for us to, to think that that community could continue to grow. And with, with the, the state incentive, um, there's, there's, it's a 30% uh, rebate incentive so that if we spend a million dollars in Indiana, um, we can get uh, a 30% rebate on that. That's hugely enticing to film companies uh, who might want to bring movies to our region. And I'm super grateful to um, Andy Zay and others uh, in, our, in our state legislature who have made that possible. I think the doors coming July 1st, uh, having been opened in that way, I think we're going to see a lot more production coming to Indiana. And, and hopefully we can be a part of helping to build the infrastructure and the excitement around bringing more productions to Indiana. And it's a, it's a proven method as well. Oh yeah, Great. there's microphones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, is a, it is a proven method as well. Like if you see what Chicago in particular has done with their expansion of their uh, Illinois film program, um, like the amount of opportunities that have popped up because of their, their expansion of those programs um, has brought films from, uh, well, films and TV shows, um, TV in particular, has very much migrated into Chicago and um, created a huge um, influx where we are just like looking for more people to work. We've literally outgrown um, most of our studio spaces and companies are coming in and building studios um, because the, the, the main basis is that they've been working um, 
they're, they're all they're all filled up with productions, and so um, it's a it's the rebate programs and things like that are proven methods in to entice groups to come in and begin working um, and creating a larger film film industry in different areas that you might not consider. <laughs> so um, it really is a phenomenal step towards getting more people here. Yeah. Um, I, you mentioned that the final edit would be at the end of the year, approximately. Would that, uh, what would be a possible actual view of the... Yeah, our, our goal is to release it in uh, 2023. That's when we should have our first release of it. Mm -hmm. To be determined. <laughs> um, but that's our goal. My goal right now is to finish today's filming, and then tomorrow's <laughs> filming, and then next week's filming, get through principal photography, and then we get into post, uh -huh. and then we're going to get to the theaters, day or screens. Day by day, hour yeah. by hour. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming, you guys, today. We'll, we'll hang around. If you have any other questions, we'd, we'd love to answer them. And Thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you.